Hi, and welcome to another episode of Java by Example. And today we're gonna continue with our invoice example. And we are going to look into the summarization, um, summarization when we actually take a lot of values or all the rows totals and then summarize them up. We calculate that and I will calculate Swedish VAT, which is kind of easy. I know that uh, America and some other countries have really interesting VAT laws that each state, for instance, have one uh, kind of uh, tax. And then if you buy from another state, then you have to take that into account and so on. But in Sweden, we have only 25% on all goods, except for books and uh, food, I think, which differ a bit. So it's much easier to get a hang of. Um, Sadly, we are selling smoked salmon in, in this shop, it seems, but I'm still gonna take 25%, so just to make it easy. So let's see here, we, uh, to do our summation, well, I think we should uh, start by actually getting the row total. So I will create an, a big decimal here that we say to total cost. Big, big decimal zero, which is actually a, something that we can define and use. So we get one of those. And then we will, for invoice row, uh, add total to total. Cost. That should be enough. In, in that, this we will do public void and total big decimal total cost. And the total cost will be equal to total cost where we have added this Let's see here total string we have so I wonder how we calculate the total string um, we got the total and then made it printable so we actually have a get total method which is good so we can reuse that here just to add our cost up. So I believe that should be enough for us to get a value after this has executed. So let's do some simple debugging and just print it here and see if we, we actually get a value after. Uh, we have run this. If it compiles, it doesn't. It does not know about the symbol big decimal. I guess it's in Java math big decimal. I think I remember that. That's much better. So let's run it. Target. And we get zero. So we actually over when we added this, we actually didn't uh, assign it. So uh, the state didn't change. So let's do this instead. So we will return the result of the add and set that to the new total cost outside of the loop. Uh, so let's try that. Ah, I didn't change the return value. Importance. Let's 
it's very good to, uh, of the type system to tell you when you don't have your types correctly implemented. That's very helpful. So let's change this to a few. So we will get a bit more of a calculation and see that it actually works with multiple values. That was a really large value. Is that still correct, I wonder? Yeah, seems to be uh, somewhat correct. Uh, we didn't have any notes on these. Um, this input, that's fine. See that that works as well. Let's see. Do we have a few open? We don't. So let's look at it here. So, yeah, notes is empty. So uh, that was correct. Just we didn't miss any implementation or had an error. That would be sad. So let's continue here. Now we have the total cost. So now we need to have a print summary and give it the total cost and then we will create this printer right beneath here if we need to change anything. Then we add the decimal cost here as well. So print some. Now let's see here. We did have a footer that we put over here. So I guess that we need a box that is after. 370 and I believe that's the width so if we add 370 and add 50 to that we end up at 420 and we need some buffer so let's say that we go to 450 and I believe that we end at uh, 550 for the full width. So let's put a box there. I believe it don't need it to be that large. Uh, so we could actually crimp it a bit. Let's say that we do uh, 60 or something. So we have a bit of room there. Then I think we need a row logic. So here we have this stroke, non-stroke. So we have the stroke color already and we have we don't have the fill, so let's put that in as well. And then I want to print few rows. See here. This will print all the rows I need, I guess. So let's say that we start the value here, and this should start at. Thirty-five. That seems to be very weird. Uh, no, it should start at say. What did I say down here? I said. Um, this function. One thirty-five. One thirty-five. So that's one seventy. So let's start at one seventy. And then we go down a bit. I wonder if we need this first rect. No, it should solve this for us. We want 
three rows. So we will print total without that, the total with that, no, the total without that, that, and the total with that. Uh, so that's three rows. And we will not put them there. Let's see if we can go back and see where we should put them. We should put them at. These values, I guess. So okay. So those should be there, and those should be one hundred up. So, but I guess that we should keep the same line over there. So let's do that to start with. Okay, so 120. Let's see how this will end up. It could be totally wrong, but it could be good as well. And we have a last stroke here. Guess we need that too to end off. Um, the bottom. So let's see if that works. So let's build it. See what we have created. Now we just work in some sort of a bubble. So yeah, that was uh, not that bad actually. Was pretty much what I wanted. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder how we should do it with with uh, our labels. If we should put them above or if we should put them in the boxes. I think we might put them in the boxes. And then this should, yeah, then this will not work. I believe we will do the exact thing that we did down here uh, with the footer that we print the rect and then put the text above the rect and then put values inside of it. So let's try that out. Um, let's go up here. We still have this stroke color. We should have a rectangle. That rectangle should start that x value and that that we want it to start at 150. Or did you? You might have done 160, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we do 20 down or up. Then we need a rectangle that is the same, but 130. Then we put one at 100. And let's say that we create our uh, summary label and summary value here. So the summary labor printer will put, put notes above the first line there. So that should be well. And then put some more text above the others. 
30 and 102. So we'll at least say subtotal here. We put that and then uh, total price. So that should be enough. Then we can uh, use our summer value printer inside of here. And that should print above the lower part of this. So this is above the box and this should be inside of the box. So then we have to go to 42, I guess. And here we should put um, subtotal. Uh, That's a value that we haven't calculated yet. So, and we also need it to be using the print function that we need. We have here that we put the scale to it and. Uh, have a nice toe string to show it off. So let's put this code here for reference. So we need that we need it later. But we can totally use uh, to string here because that we know is is what we want to accomplish when we have the the actual value done. And here we want to put uh, that value some total that value and here total cost I believe we have the total cost so that's no problem so total cost should have this scale already and that value should have the scale and some total should have the scale so that's the first part. Then we need to create these big decimal values. So we can have those, the bat value and the subtotal. And to be a bit lazy, I think we should just use this subtotal cost and multiply it by 1.8 so that's the simple way to uh, do uh, backwards multiplication and get uh, the value that is that is what you get back after you have removed 25% of the total cost and if you do multiply by uh, 1 uh, 2 point, uh, 0 0.2 you get the value which is 25 percent so if you take a number let's say 100 and you remove 20 uh, from that value then you have 80 and if 80 is the value the actual cost of the price with out VAT and you should add VAT to that value, you should add 25%. So that's 25% of 80, which is 20. So that's the 20 that we subtracted earlier. So that piece of math is a bit weird, but after you have worked in the financial sector a bit, you see these calculations all over the place. They are not uh, correct at all places, especially when you come to calculating with uh, values that are badly rounded, then you can get a really, really weird problems with these sorts of calculations. But for, for our purpose, though, they are sufficient. So let's see what we end up with here. See if we get any summation on the page and if it's more or less. No, I 
did run it. Oh, I got an error, of course. So let's see what the error was. Uh, cannot find symbol. Uh, rounding mode, okay. So rounding mode was something that we needed to add, I guess, to, to this. And then we need to add it as well to our invoice so we can use that piece of tech. Let's see if that's enough, no. Let's see here. Um, float value cannot be converted to big decimal. Okay, so we can only multiply two big decimal values, but that, that's okay. I believe that we could could create big decimal by just adding a new statement around it. I believe. Or if that's not the case, you can always create a big decimal from a string. Uh, I don't know if that's performant, but big decimals uh, are good at string formatting. So, see here. Stroke color is already defined. You are so right. Thank you for informing me. Um, copy paste issue. So now it compiles. Let's see if the actual PDF is what we intended. It's not. So let's see what we did wrong here. The subtotal should be at 82. That's uh, something that is pretty obvious because we print it up. We actually have 160 plus 20, 130 plus 20, and 100 plus 20. So that wasn't that weird. And then our other values should be just some points above the other line. So let's move everything around and see if that's more like what we want. So let's run it and oh, not compile it again. And look, now we have actually printed the values in the box. Uh, so that's good. I believe that two of the values didn't get the format correct. We set, we had the scale set to those two. So I wonder why, why this rounding mode didn't do anything. Interesting. Hmm. Should have uh, rounded them up, right? Let's see here, and if we, we should still put these a bit further inside of the box, and I believe the box might be a bit big too. So let's see, here we can say the box should be 16 large, and then we have a padding of four below. Should be enough. Change all these to 16. And then we put four padding for the values inside the box. So that might be a bit more presentable. So let's uh, look at big decimal and rounding. Uh, big decimal. 
why didn't it round up? Set scale. Okay, so it will return a big decimal as well. So the problem was that we didn't assign our values. So let's try that. Here, package. And run. And look at it. Look at it in its glory. Okay, so I have added something to the box, and that's fine. But my calculations was not correct anymore because those were done uh, by actually thinking about, let me see here. So that's where the box should end up after we uh, add the actual 20. But that's not what we do, we add 16. So we need to go to, and go down a few, just to put those on the correct place. And then we need to look here, that's at 34, and this at 64. So those should be pretty much good. But I believe that we could uh, bump up this value to 12. And that might be a bit more presentable because I want them to stand out a bit more. Uh, perhaps even more than their labels because those are interesting values and we also want to add some let's say that we just add simple um, we could use the Swedish crowns so I just have something that we print, and then we don't want it to print in that direction. No, that would be too easy, right? We have our uh, put text from the right, right? Did we use that in the invoice row, perhaps? Yeah, to the right. So let's reuse that function because we want uh, our numbers to be on the other side. So let's see here we have uh, a box that is 120 big and starts at 451 for some odd reason. I think we should put those back to 450. So then we need to go to the end of that. So that's 570. And then from 570, oh, sorry. There we go. 570 and then four back. So that's 566. I guess, to get our four pixels of padding from the end. Let's try that. Now we are thinking with portals. So this looks uh, pretty good, I think. Um, we might want to do a 
bit of a movement here. So we do 5 to 90. So we move everything down. And it's 5 to 90 on these two. And here we have 4. Seventy-seven. And the subtotal. Uh, let's go back here. How did we change sixty? So this should be sixty, fifty, twenty. down 10 pixels, see if that's more aligned with the text, uh, with the notes, because it looked a bit wonky when it wasn't aligned with notes. No, we didn't. So the notes are at, um, let's see here. Notes are at 172, so we need to put this at 72. And then we need to put, let's see here, 67. So we need to push this five pixels up and 72. So Five pixels, five pixels, and nine, 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 twelve, forty-two. Will that look better? Not really. Uh, so now we need to actually make something here. Int uh, row y summary start. And we put that at one seventy six, perhaps. Uh, no, one one seventy. Let's say that. And if so, if we do one seventy. This value here is, what's the difference here? So if we put that there, it's 17. Fifteen, yeah, seventeen. So this is minus seventeen pixels, and this is uh, minus thirteen pixels. So that's the the number of pixels that we go uh, down here, and this is. 
20 pixels less. So this should be uh, 20 minus 17. And this should be 20 minus 13. And then we do the same with the last one, which should be 20 mi uh, minus 40. Just so we see what what change we have. So let's see if we have actually moved it a few pixels. That's what I believe this change of code should do. So let's see if my belief is correct. No, I have actually push them together a bit um, so it wasn't 20 pixels so let's say that we do 30 pixels then. and do a 30 pixel change and here we do a 60 pixel change that be good. Do some fussing here. So we, yeah, that's good. So now I need to push it. Few pixels up, perhaps only one pixel. Let's try that. And see if what what we get. Yeah, it's aligned. Great. So now we have those in alignment and we have printed the summation of the of our uh, our invoice. So now you could think that we are done. And we pretty much are. We have one issue left that I think we will look into the next time. And that's the problem when we change our code to use the JSON lots. Because that's the last example that we need to cover. And then we have a bit of a different challenge. And I don't know if we even could print this. Uh, it seems like we have some values in lots that is not allowed. I put some Chinese characters in it. Seems like those didn't jog well with the, the, the JSON parser, which is a sad uh, affair. Um, let's put them here at the moment, because those are not important for my point. So let's just say Mr. First name Scott Smith. So I don't have any more Chinese characters. I don't. So that's that's a problem that we might need to tackle as well. But if we run this and it actually works, then we have this problem. That we actually have a few too many rows to actually print it on one side. And this example is actually 1000 rows large, just to be ridiculous. But I wanted to make something that is really hard to print and which would give us a large number 
uh, in the uh, summation fields and so on so we could see that it works for a few uh, it works with no rows it works with a few rows and it works with a lot of rows and so this is the last example which doesn't work at the moment I believe though that we still are working uh, with uh, empty JSON because that's also important that we don't break uh, break our code for even the, the simple case when we don't have any data more than the actual header information. So that's creating test cases for each different amount of value that we could have. So here we have an, a totally valid PDF with no rows. So the summation is zero and that should work as well. So uh, next time we will look into how to split this PDF and present multiple uh, pages of rows. But uh, I think it's uh, we have done enough for today. I really hope that you learned something uh, from this video and that you uh, give this video a like. Um, leave a nice comment and uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong, what uh, you would like to see more of, what you want to see less of and uh, how you would do this differently. And uh, subscribe for more Java examples and I really hope to see you in the next one.